Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Sohil and today we are going to start new unit from Pharmacovigilance, BPharm 8th semester. Previously, we already covered unit first from Social and Preventive Pharmacy, so kindly go and watch that videos from description box. So today we are going to cover unit first, that is introduction or overview of Pharmacovigilance. So let's get started. First of all, what is Pharmacovigilance? Pharmacovigilance is basically derived from Greek word that is pharmacon which means medicinal substance and Latin word vigila which means to keep watch. WHO defined pharmacovigilance as the signs and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse effect or any other drug related problems. This is called pharmacovigilance. Now coming to the historical background of pharmacovigilance. First tragedy happened in 1960 that is thalidomide tragedy. In 1960 thalidomide marketed in 46 countries as hypnotic for prevention of nausea in pregnancy. Thalidomide is heavily promoted. In 1960 first report of deformed infants that is phocomelia occurs in more than 20,000 cases. Now what is the direct result of thalidomide incident? In USA, 1962 amendment to Federal Food Drug and Cosmetic Act was established and it required both safety and efficacy data. In UK, 1964 yellow card scheme was established and then WHO that is World Health Organization 1968 program for international drug monitoring is established. So this is all about the history of pharmacovigilance. Now what is the main aim of pharmacovigilance? So the aim of pharmacovigilance is to improve patient care and safety in relation to the use of medicines and all medicinal or medical and paramedical intervention. To improve public health and safety in relation to the use of medicines. Pharmacovigilance also contribute to the assessment of benefit, harm, effectiveness and risk of medicines, encouraging their safe, rational and more effective use. It is used to promote understanding, education and clinical training in pharmacovigilance and its effective communication to health professionals and the public. Now coming to the basic terminology which is used in pharmacovigilance. First, adverse drug reaction that is ADR. It is an unintended reaction to a drug taken at doses normally used in man. When an association between an adverse event that is AE and a drug is established, it becomes an ADR. Then second terminology is adverse event which is also called as AE. A negative experience encountered by an individual during the course of a clinical trial which may or may not be associated with a drug. Then third serious adverse event that is SAE. Any adverse event which is fatal, life threatening, permanently disabling or which result in hospitalization. This is called serious adverse event which is also called as SAE. Now coming to the pharmacovigilance processes. First detecting and reporting of adverse drug reaction. Adverse drug reaction form is filled out with the patient and reaction details. This letter forms basis for data entry. There are two types of reporting spontaneous reporting and mandatory reporting. First one is spontaneous reporting. It is most common form of adverse drug reaction reporting. Healthcare professional identify and report any suspected adverse drug reaction to their national pharmacovigilance center or to the manufacturers. This is called spontaneous reporting. Then second type of reporting is mandatory reporting. Manufacturers are required to submit reports to their receive from healthcare providers to the national authority in the form of PSUR that is periodic safety update report. A regulatory document prepared by the marketing authorization holder and submitted to the agency. Worldwide post authorization safety experience include information on all ADRs collected irrespective of the reporting country. Includes scientific evaluation of the risk benefit balance. Then second type of pharmacovigilance process is data collection and capture. Third, data storage and maintenance. Fourth, data selection, retrieval, 
and manipulation. So this is all about the pharmacovigilance processes with their reportings. Now coming to the signal detection. Now what do you mean by signal? Signal is the new previously unknown safety information. WHO defined signal as the reported information on a possible causal association between an adverse event and a drug. The relationship being unclear or incompletely documented previously. This is called signal. Now coming to the UMC which is also called as Uppsala Monitoring Center. So Uppsala Monitoring Center that is UMC is a field name of the WHO collaborating center for international drug monitoring. It is responsible for the management of the WHO program for international drug monitoring. Now what are the functions of WHO program for international drug monitoring? It includes identification and analysis of new adverse reaction signal from the case report information submitted to the national centers and from them to the database. Information exchange between WHO and national centers mainly through VGMED and email information exchange system. Publication of periodical newsletters, guidelines and books in the pharmacovigilance and risk management area. These are the functions of WHO program for International Drug Monitoring Center. Although some of the functions of these are supply of tools for management of clinical information including adverse reaction case report that is WHO drug dictionary, WHO adverse reaction terminology, then provision of training and consultancy support to national centers and countries establishing pharmacovigilance system and computer software for case report management designed to suit the needs of national centers that is VGFlow and also annual meeting for representatives of national centers at which scientific and organizational matter are discussed. Methodological research for the development of pharmacovigilance as a science. So this is all about the functions of WHO monitoring center. Now coming to the function of Uppsala monitoring center. To coordinate the WHO program for international drug monitoring and its more than 80 member countries. It is used to collect, access and communicate information from member countries about the benefit, harm and risk of drug and other substances used in medicines to improve patient therapy and public health worldwide. It is used to collaborate with member countries in the development and practice of the science of pharmacovigilance. So this is the function of Uppsala monitoring centers. Now what is the timeline of reporting an adverse drug reaction? by sponsors to licensing authority that is 14 calendar days investigation to sponsor within 24 hours and investigation to ethic committee within 7 working days this is the timeline of reporting and ADR now coming to the pharmacovigilance in UK in United Kingdom yellow card scheme was established and ADROIT that is adverse drug reaction online information tracking system was also established and then very important UDRA Vigilance. UDRA Vigilance is a data processing network and management for reporting and evaluating of suspected drug reaction or suspected adverse reaction during the development and following market authorization of medicinal product in the EEA that is European Economic Area. So this is all about the pharmacovigilance in United Kingdom. Now coming to the PVPI that is pharmacovigilance program in India or pharmacovigilance program of India. So this is the overall governance structure of PVPI. It is controlled by National Pro Pharmacovigilance Program of India which is headquarter and the main body who regulate this in India is Central Drug Standard Control Organization that is CDSEO under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare that is MOHFW. Please take a screenshot of this slide for gaining much more knowledge regarding this. Now what is the main goal for establishing pharmacovigilance program? It is used to ensure that the benefit of use of medicine outweighs the risk and thus safeguard the health of the Indian population. This is the main goal behind pharmacovigilance. Now coming to the objectives, 
it is used to monitor adverse drug reaction that is adrs in indian population it is used to create awareness among healthcare professional about the importance of adr reporting in india it is used to monitor benefit risk profile of medicines it is used to generate independent evidence based recommendation on the safety of medicines it is used to support the central drug standard control organization for formulating safety related regulatory decision for medicine it is used to communicate findings with all key stakeholders it is used to create a national centers of excellence at per with global drug safety monitoring standard this is all the objectives of pharmacovigilance now coming to the five years road map of pharmacovigilance program of india from 2010 to 15 from 2010 to 11 the initiation phase of pharmacovigilance started and then from 11 to 12 expansion and consolidation phase started and then from 2012 to 2013 expansion and maintenance phase started and then in 13 to 14 pv is going under its expansion and optimization phase and by the year of 2015 pharmacovigilance achieve excellence so this is all about today's session in this way we cover complete chapter 1 from unit 1 in next lecture we will start introduction to adverse drug reaction till then take care and bye bye